hello students in this video we are we are going to discuss the basic components of a pcr reaction now the normal reaction mix consists of dntps we have dna polymerase which is the enzyme we have the template dna on which the synthesis has to take place and we have the primers that are forward and reverse primers coming to the dntps that is deoxyribonucleotides now the concentration for these dntps has to be in a range of 50 to 1500 micromolar but it a very low concentration and a very high concentration is not good so we need to have an optimum concentration of these dntps and uh, as this figure shows all the four dntps these dntps has to be in equal concentration to have a good pcr reaction now the second thing that comes is the dna polymerase dna polymerase since we are doing pcr at a very high temperature so we need an enzyme which is stable at that temperature so we have tac enzyme which is a thermos thermostable enzyme and it's very efficient it has high progressivity this is isolated actually from thermos acutic acutus which is a bacteria that is a thermophile and is isolated from yellowstone national park and but this enzyme has a high error rate that is 1 in 10,000 base pairs and it do lacks 5 dash to 3 dash exonuclease activity which is very important for proofreading function so we have other alternatives also we have pfu that is pyrococcus fusarius deep vent vent kod pwo these are the other enzymes that can be used in a pcr reaction next we come to dna templates virtually all forms of dna can be templates for pcr it can be a genomic plasmid phage dna or previously amplified pcr product also even a single even dna from a single cell can be also be sufficient but we have to ensure that dna must not be contaminated the next we come to is the one of the important basic component of a pcr reaction that is primers now primer length has to be very specific being uh, a good primer uh, as you can see in this slide it should be 13 to 30 base pairs long it's so because if we have a very short primer that would bind to a non-target site and if we have a very long primer the reaction rate can be very slow moreover the base composition should be 50 to 60 percent gc content this is because like gc shows three hydrogen bonds so this gets a very stable bonding so the base composition should be 50 to 60 percent of gc content next is the melting and annealing temperature the melting temperature is actually the temperature at which half of the dna unbinds so the melting temperature of the true primers should not be at a difference of more than 5 degrees celsius too low, temp too low melting temperature can lead to non-specific binding and too high temperature can give you poor results because poor annealing is there due to disruption of the hydrogen bonds so an optimum melting and analytical any leaving temperature is required for the primers so melting temperature it depends upon the length and the composition of the primer along of course when there is more gc content more strong hydrogen bonding is there and we have higher melting temperature the melting temperature can be calculated by this formula which says 4 into g plus c plus 2 into a plus t now one another important aspect of primer designing is that it should not be having any complementary or secondary structures and these uh, this type of as you can see in this figure these type of inverted sequences repeats this can lead to structures like hairpin structures which again will not allow the primer to bind to the template strand so these type of structures should be avoided while designing your primer 